If we take a look at the ancient Indian as well as the ancient Greek philosophical systems like monism, a lot of similarities can be observed. And after observing these similarities, it comes as no surprise the existence of analogous ideas in both regions. Stoicism is the philosophy that started during the Hellenistic period in Greece. The main purpose of life according to Stoicism is to live virtuously in agreement with nature. Now I'm not going to expand on it by talking about its origins and authors, but rather by bringing into discussion another text and a different point of view. What we will be talking about is the philosophical themes present in the Bhagavad Gita, and specifically we will discuss the contents of chapter 1 and chapter 2. So a brief introduction for those who are not familiar with this work. Bhagavad Gita is the extract of the fruit called Mahabharat. Mahabharat narrates the struggle between two groups of cousins in the Kurukshetra war, the Kauravs and the Pandavas. The Gita on the other hand takes place in the form of Lord Krishna's teachings to the Pandav prince Arjun who is struck with moral uncertainty and sadness at the thought of violence against his own kin. So let's begin. While on the battlefield, Arjun takes a look at both his and the opponent's army. He sees that the people involved in this war are his own teachers, uncles, brothers, sons and grandsons. Seeing the fact that the war will result in the death of his own kin, he says, When I see my own people arrayed and eager for fight, O Krishna, my limbs quail, my mouth goes dry, my body shakes and my hair stands on end. I do not see any good in slaying my own people in the fight. I do not long for victory, nor kingdom, nor pleasures. It is better to live in this world even by begging than to slay the honored teachers. Those for whose sake we desire kingdom, enjoyments and pleasures, they stand here in battle, renouncing their lives and riches. He asks Sri Krishna, Why should we not have the wisdom to turn away from this sin? We who see the wrong in the destruction of the family. To which Sri Krishna replies, Whence has come to thee this stain of spirit in this hour of crisis? Cast off this petty faint-heartedness and arise, O oppressor of the foes. Now a lot of you may find the points raised by Arjun sensible, just like Emerson and Thoreau first did when they read the Gita. His path seems to be that of non-violence and peace. Arjun may even appear to be as the stoic one in this discussion, but identify this not as renunciation but rather escapism. Notice that Arjun initiates the conversation with his limbs squaling and body shaking. The path of renunciation becomes an easy answer when we find ourselves in tough times. The very action of renunciation by Arjun is rooted in his desire to save his kinsmen. And due to this desire arises the uncertainty of mind. The action is hence self-centered. Shri Krishna says to Arjun, You grieve for those whom you should not grieve for and yet you speak words about wisdom. Wise men do not grieve for the dead or for the living. For to the one that is born, death is certain, and certain is birth for the one that has died. Therefore, you should not grieve for what is unavoidable. Never was there a time when I was not, nor you, nor these lords of men, nor will there ever be a time hereafter when we all shall cease to be. As the soul passes in the body through childhood, youth, and old age, even so is its taking on of another body. Contacts with their objects give rise to cold and heat pleasure and pain. They come and go and do not last forever. These learn to endure, O brother. The man who is not troubled by these, who remains the same in pain and pleasure, is wise. Sri Krishna guides Arjun by showing him the impermanence of the body and the permanence of the soul. He points out to Arjun the insanity in grieving for what is unavoidable. It's just like what Epictetus said in the Enchiridion. If you wish your children and your wife and your friends to live forever, you are foolish. For you wish things to be in your power which are not so, and what belongs to others to be your own. Men are disturbed, not by things, but by the views which they take of things. Thus, death is nothing terrible, else it would have appeared so to Socrates. But the terror consists in our notion of death that it is terrible. Both pain and pleasure rise because of the senses and are just like winter and summer, they do not last forever. And just the way you perform your duties irrespective of winter or summer, perform them irrespective of pain or pleasure. And on the duty of Arjuna, Shri Krishna says, Having regard for your own duty, you should not falter. There exists no greater good for a warrior than a battle enjoined by duty. 
Happy are the warriors Arjun for whom such a war comes of its own accord as an open door to heaven but if you does not this lawful battle then you will fail your duty and glory and will incur sin he states the action born out of false sentimentality or cowardice as sin shri krishna further expands on what the right action is treating alike pleasure and pain gain and loss victory and defeat then get ready for battle thus you shall not incur sin to action alone has you a right and never at all to its fruits let not the fruits of the action be your motive neither let there be in you any attachment to inaction do your work o arjun abandoning attachment with an even mind in success and failure he who is without affection on any side who does not rejoice or loathe as he obtains good or evil is wise he unto whom all desires enter as waters into the sea which though ever being filled is ever motionless attains to peace and not he who hugs his desires he who abandons all desires and acts free from longing without any sense of mindness or egotism he attains to peace the outcome of success or failure depends on various factors of which individual is just one instead of troubling the mind by worrying about what is not under our control we should let it be occupied with the action at hand When you set about any action remind yourself of what nature the action is demand not that events should happen as you wish but wish them to happen as they do happen and you will go on well The final words of Giordano Bruno who refused to renounce his beliefs when being tried by the Catholic Inquisition were I have fought that is much victory is in the hands of fate be that as it may with me this at least future ages will not deny of me be the victor who it may that i did not fear to die yielded to none of my fellows in constancy and preferred a spirited death to a cowardly life on parting thoughts if you really want to escape the things that harass you what you are needing is not to be in a different place but to be a different person